Hey guys, Andrew here with this week's video. This week I'm going to go over some more um, in-depth things in Adobe Illustrator. Some of my students ended up creating camo patterns, so I did a little demo in class and I, I recorded it so that I could turn it into a video for you guys. If you guys are trying to figure out how to create a repeat pattern or camo pattern, don't sweat it. Uh, it takes a lot of practice just to kind of get down the like method and the process. If you guys have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments. If you guys create something and this video helped you out, please tag me in it. I'd love to see what you guys make. I hope this is as beneficial to you guys as it was for some of my students. Thanks so much, guys. Enjoy the tutorial. Okay, so I'm using this pattern that I already did for Reebok. And this was a running pattern. It's the one that says runners high. Runners is right there. High is right there. So I'm pretty sure this is the repeat tile. So I'm just going to copy it and drag it over here. Nope, nope, not quite the repeat tile. Okay, so that's roughly the repeat tile. As you can see now, like that's what it would look like when it repeats. So I'm going to do really quick like a camo pattern just to show you guys how to do it. Um, you can follow along or you can just watch and then or take notes or whatever. So I'm going to start off and I'm going to make a box just to kind of put everything in, all my shapes. Uh, you can make it a square, you can make it a rectangle, it doesn't have to be a perfect square. But I'm going to, I'll do a, a rectangle for now. So I've got my rectangle. And then now I need to draw some shapes on the inside of it for my camo pattern. So I'm going to grab the pen tool and I'm just going to click and make some points. And to note, I'm not really paying too much attention to where my shapes like go off the page and my shapes on the other side of it because when it comes to doing something like this, it's a little bit harder to plan that out. Like if you're doing something very geometric like polka dots, like I did showed you guys last time I did a tutorial, um, that's a little bit easier to just kind of like take a shape, copy it, move it to the other side of your uh, tile and then line it up. Whereas this is a little bit harder to do, to do it that way. So I'm going to show you guys kind of the way I do it. And there's probably a better way to do it, but it just wor works for me. I want these shapes to go in the back. So I'm going to arrange them uh -huh, and push them to the back. So I can do Command Shift and then the left bracket to push those all the way back. And I'm going to copy my tile shape because I want there to be a background color. I'm going to copy that and then I'm going to paste it behind these shapes which is command B. So I'm going to take the shape that I initially made and I'm going to put it in front of everything. So I'm going to do command shift and then the right bracket to bring it all the way to the front. Now I'm going to select everything and make a clipping pass, clipping mask. So that is going to be my pretend tile for this. So I'm going to drag it up here in the, um, this gray negative space just to show you kind of what it would look like if it were a repeat right now. So it kind of makes something like that. So I got to get rid of these hard lines to make it actually repeat seamlessly. So the easy way for me to do it is I'm going to delete these top two and I'm going to go in here. So I want to connect, I want to bring this shape and this shape together, but I like how it's lining up up here already pretty well. So what I typically do is I'm going to click on this one and I'm going to double click on it, which brings up this little thing. It says the clip group. So now I'm only working on that um, on that clipping mask. And I'm going to click on this shape right here 
and I'm going to go ahead and alter some of its points. So I'm using the direct selection tool, which is the, um, if you just use the shortcut of um, A on your keyboard, it'll bring up the direct selection tool. So now I'm going to try and match this shape up, the one that's highlighted, with this shape over here in the other, in the other pattern. So that was pretty close. So I'm going to double click out of that and it's going to take me out of it. Well, I made those changes in this group, but it's not in this group. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back into this one. I'm going to click on this shape and I'm going to copy it. So Command C. Now I'm going to go over here to this clipping group and I'm going to click on this shape and I'm going to hit Command, in, Command um, F for paste in front. And now I just pasted the shape that I had just altered in the other clipping group right there. Now I want to bring this shape into uh, this side, which will end up coming in over here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on this shape, and I'm going to do the same thing I did with the other one. And I'm going to alter it and bring it down here like this. So I've got that to where I want it, and I'm going to copy that shape. And now I'm going to bring it over here into this one. I'm going to say Command F, and it's pasted in there. So now it looks like it seamlessly matches up. Well, the problem is it doesn't match up over here because if this was a complete tile in this one box, I would have part of this shape, the one that's highlighted, over here in the corner. So I had to figure out how to do how to bring that over there. So an easy way to do it is to just grab this clipping group and I'm going to drag it holding down shift on top of my other one. And I'm going to make sure it's in front by doing command shift in the right bracket and then I'm going to double click on it to highlight it and I'm going to click on this shape and this shape since I altered both of these and I'm going to copy both of those. Now I'm going to double click out of my clipping group and I'm going to move it back next to the other one. Now I'm going to go back into my first clipping group and I'm going to select this shape and I don't want this one anymore because I want to replace it with the altered version. So I'm going to delete that shape. Now I'm going to hit Command F for paste in front and I just pasted the two shapes that I had altered to make um, a seamless repeat on that, on that edge. So now I'm going to click back out. So now I'm going to move my second one over just to get it out of the way for now. I'm going to grab my original clipping group and I'm going to copy it and move it over here. So you can see it now repeats sideways. So now I have to do the same thing for it to repeat up and down. So I'm going to grab both of those shapes, I'm going to select them both, and I'm going to copy them both with Command C again. Then I'm going to exit out of that clipping group. Now I'm going to select this clipping group, go into it, and I'm going to paste in front of that. So I just pasted those two shapes that I altered from the, the clipping group below it. So now those line up. Um, and I still need to remember about that shape, so I'm going to go in and I'm going to actually, this shape is going to be really easy because all I have to do is select it, copy it, and then go into my first clipping group, select this green shape, and then hit Command in front, or Command F for paste in front. So now that shape shows up in that one. So those line up. So yeah, I'm going to take my second clip group and I'm going to bring it down in front of my front of my first one and then I'm going to go into that clip group I'm going to select these two shapes down here copy those exit out of my clip group drag it back up and then I'm going to go back to my original clip group and I'm going to paste in front and put those two shapes in 
Now if I get rid of this guy up here, I should have a repeat tile that seamlessly repeats now. If I copy it up there and copy it to the sides. Oh, nope, I got one spot where it doesn't seamlessly repeat. Right there, you can see that corner. So that's gonna be pretty easy to fix. So I'm just going to go into this clip group, select my shape, copy it, select my original clip group, and paste in front, copy that one. And then paste in front there. So I've made a really rough camo pattern and it repeats. Zoom in, you don't see any lines from where this, the original tile was. And now if I want to turn that into a swatch, all I have to do is take my original tile. I'm going to double click on it. I'm going to select the outside shape the original rectangle and I'm going to copy that. So Command C again. Then I'm going to double click out of my clip group. I'm going to select the whole thing and I'm going to paste behind. So Command B. So that's behind it now. So once I do that, uh, the only thing I have to do now is drag it up into the swatches menu. So I'm just going to select everything I have right there and I'm going to drag that entire shape up into my swatches menu. Now, I'm going to move these over. I'm going to draw a really big shape and I'm going to fill it with my pattern. So, swatches, fill. So, that's how it works. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope that gave you guys a more in-depth look at Adobe Illustrator and how to create camo repeat patterns. Like I said before, if you guys found this video helpful, please feel free to tag me in it. I would love to see what you guys make using my video. Same thing goes for actually my brush and texture packs if you guys download those on Gumroad. This week I actually have a really cool announcement. I'm going to be taking part in the Grand Rapids Comic Con as an exhibitor. I'm pretty pumped about it. I've even taken the liberty of getting a few extra little things for my booth that I didn't already have. Kind of like this. This will be hung up on my booth, either in front of my table or behind me. So if you guys are in the area and come by the Grand Rapids Comic Con, just look for this sign. As always, you guys can follow me on any of my social media channels. Those include Instagram, Twitter, Tumblr, Behance, Periscope, and Gumroad. Like I said, on Gumroad, you guys can find all my brushes and textures there for free. Uh, and don't forget, you guys can go to my website at schmanderart.com. That is S-C-H-M-A-N-D-R-E-W-Art.com. On my website, you guys can find links to all my social media sites in case you get confused. You can even sign up for my email newsletter where I'm sure I will be updating all of my subscribers to uh, how the Grand Rapids Comic Con went. Thanks so much, guys, and I will see you next week or maybe later because of the convention. So, bye.